So it's 2022. I'm perusing Netflix looking for something to watch when I notice all 15 seasons of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Now I know nothing about It's Always Sunny except for the memes online and that the show was darkly comedic and the characters weren't exactly known for being the nicest people. So I thought, why not? Everyone is telling me it's good. It seems like it's something that I'd enjoy. Little did I know that I was about to watch the most consistently funny television show that I have ever seen. It is outstanding that out of 15 seasons, I only thought one of them was bad, which we'll get to shortly. As you likely know, It's Always Sunny focuses on the lives of three dudes as they do everything except for running a pub. The three dudes consist of Mac, a homophobic gay Catholic man, Dennis, a woman obsessed serial killer, and Charlie, a moron. There's also a girl called Dee who is essentially just a living punchline for the guys and Danny DeVito. So let's break down the characters a little further. Mac initially starts out as the worst member of the group. As many will notice in the first episode of the show, Mac is both homophobic and racist. The man is also a hypocrite, proudly proclaiming his beliefs one second before turning around and doing the exact opposite of what he just said. For example, watch the abortion episode. Mac also goes through the most changes of any of the It's Always Sunny characters, not just in terms of personality and beliefs, but also physical appearance. For an entire season, Mac is fat. I don't know why it works, but it does. However, what's more impressive is when he out of nowhere gets ripped for no reason. I guess the only thing left for Rob McElhenney to do is go really skinny. I'm sure there are some really good skinny jokes out there that the It's Always Sunny crew could take advantage of. If there is one criticism I have of Mac's character, it's that I personally think it would have been better if he was bi, not gay, as some of the earlier seasons episodes have Mac act in a very clearly straight way, and having him be bisexual would have just covered this completely, but it's only a minor thing really. Charlie is the standout star of It's Always Sunny, what with Charlie Day's career receiving the biggest boost out of all the It's Always Sunny cast. Now the defining aspect is that Charlie is really stupid and slow to pick up on things, that most other people would have no issue with. He also has a strange stalkery obsession with the waitress, much to her obvious annoyance. Whenever Charlie is on screen, it makes the show exciting as you never know what strange thought is going to come out of his mouth next. However, the best part about Charlie is his relationship with Frank, with the two of them developing an odd father-son relationship. This relationship is surprisingly well done and it's clear the two characters really care for each other, best shown in the finale of season 15. It was a great idea to bring Danny DeVito for the show, as it feels like his natural humour coalesces with the comedy in It's Always Sunny. Frank is a disgusting pervert who is nothing but a bad influence on all those around him, as he along with the rest of the gang slowly destroy the lives of all the normal people that they come across. A lot of the gross out moments go to Frank, and Danny DeVito delivers them expertly. It's also very clear that Danny does not phone in his performance, as there are a lot of scenes where Danny DeVito gives a masterclass in acting, such as the moment where he breaks down during therapy. While some people may have been apprehensive about him joining the show, Danny DeVito fits in perfectly with the It's Always Sunny gang. Then there's Dennis, my favourite character in the show. Glenn Harrington is probably the biggest surprise in It's Always Sunny, as his great acting chops slowly creep up on you over the course of the series. In all seriousness, this guy is very good, and if it wasn't for Danny DeVito, then Glenn Harrington would clearly be the best actor in the show. Dennis is arguably the most unique character in the show, what with him being a psychopath who takes great pleasure in coercing women into sleeping with him. The man is certainly certifiably insane, but the real question is whether he is a murderer or not. Now the answer may forever elude us, but I think deep down we all know the real answer. Finally, there's Sweet D. Going into the show, and even after watching the first episode, I assumed D was going to be the typical straight character, usually occupied by the only female actor in these comedy shows. Fortunately, Caitlin Olsen knew that this was not the right direction for her character, and was able to convince the others that Dee should be just as deplorable as the other guys. Dee is probably my favourite female comedy character at the moment, due to just how willing Caitlin Olsen is to make sure the joke involving her character lands, such as running headfirst into a car so hard that it leaves a dent. While in the earlier seasons I found Dee to be lacklustre, she very quickly grew on me and outshined some of the other characters. Some of them. No one can outshine the Golden God. Before I talk about a few of the negatives I have with the show, I'd also like to highlight a few of the supporting characters who really stuck out to me. Firstly, the McPoyles are the best, and it's a bit of a shame that we haven't seen or heard from them in so long. I love how grotesque they are, they make Frank and Charlie seem normal. Then there's poor Cricket. It was hilariously heartbreaking watching both the physical and psychological breakdown of a seemingly good man. 
The white just appears in the show the most out of any FD, it's always sunny supporting characters, and it's always a pleasant experience watching her try and fight off Charlie's advances. Artis is another cool character, a person like whenever she's paired with Frank. Maureen Ponderosa, Gail the Snell, Carmen, Jack Kelly, the Jewish lawyer, all the characters' parents are all fantastic characters and help provide the show with a lived in world. Now at the beginning of the video I said all but one season were great. The bad season I was referring to was of course season 13. Season 13 really struggles without the presence of Dennis. I'm not just saying that because he's my favourite, but I think removing any of the characters would make the show weaker. That's not to say that there aren't any good episodes in season 13, just that the season overall was not up to the standard of everything that had come before. This dip in quality also bled into the last two seasons slightly, as well as I think they are good and did enjoy them, they lacked something that I can't quite put my finger on. However, season 14 was better than season 13, and season 15 was better than season 14, so hopefully the show will be able to reclaim its former glory. This issue aside, it's amazing how many banger episodes there are on this show, and it's very clear why this is the longest running American live action sitcom. I said American because Britain actually has its always sunny beat. I'm looking forward to season 16, and can't wait to meet back up with the gang as soon as possible. Like and subscribe, bye bye.